All right, so uh, a few last examples here related to addition of integers. And we're just going to add a few follow, you know, the following uh, numbers. 3 plus negative 7, negative 7 plus negative 8, negative 5 plus 9. And again, you could do this with the number line. And I'm going to kind of show you how I think about it at least. And, you know, maybe, hopefully it's not too terribly confusing. Um, I'm going to put the 3 in parentheses. And then I'm going to put the uh, negative 7 also in parentheses. It already was. Okay, so we've got 3 plus negative 7. Okay, so again, in terms of our number line, we're going three units to the right, and then we're going seven units back to the left. And I think you could figure out, you know, where that, that puts you using our number line trick. The way I like to do it is, okay, if they're opposite signs, so one po is positive and one is negative, okay, if that happens, what I do is I just pretend they're both positive. And I take, uh, so instead of negative seven, I pretend I've got positive seven. And I just take the larger number and I subtract away the smaller number when I make them both positive. Okay, so 3 is already positive. We made this uh, negative 7 positive. So 7 minus 3 is positive 4. Okay, but that's again, that's not the problem we have. This is how I think about it. I just pretend they're both positive, bigger minus smaller. Well, in this case, though, the next thing I do is I look at each number, and I think about the absolute value of them. Well, the absolute value of 3 is 3, and the absolute value of negative 7 is positive 7. I pick out the larger number, okay, so the larger absolute value in this case is positive 7. Whatever sign that number had originally before we took the absolute value, which in this case is negative, that's going to be the sign we keep. So 3 plus negative 7 is going to give us not positive 4, but negative 4 as our solution. Okay, so there's part A. So again, opposite signs, I make them both positive, bigger minus smaller. Okay, and then I think about the sign at the end, and I think, well, uh, sort of negative 7 is more negative than 3 is positive, so we're going to keep a negative number. Okay, um, there was part A. Let's even, uh, you know, let's even look at part C here real quick, and we'll come back to part B. So we've got negative 5 plus 9, just to do the exact same thing. Okay, so if I look at them in absolute value, I've got 5 and I've got 9. Again, they're opposite signs. I'm going to do the larger minus the smaller, which is going to give us positive 4. And again, if I look at the absolute value of negative 5 and the absolute value of positive 9, the positive part is going to have the larger absolute value. So we're going to keep this as a positive number. So negative 5 plus 9 is the same thing as 9 minus 5, or we get positive 4, and that's our solution. All right, let's go back to part B. Okay, so notice now they both have the exact same sign. So we've got negative 7 plus negative 8. So in this case, so in this case, what I do is I pretend they're both positive in my head. I'm just doing positive 7 and positive 8 and getting 15. But if they're the same sign, really what happens is is instead of positive 15, we'll just get, well, negative 15. Okay, and again, you can think about this in terms of a number line. You're going 7 units to the left, and then you go another 8 units to the left. Well, that's going to put you out there at negative 15. So I think this number line uh, way of visualizing things is always a good idea. It sort of helps you, you know, uh, think about left and rights and uh, might help you keep, uh, keep your signs together a little bit better. But... So again, one more time. If they're the same sign, I just make them all positive, add them, and then I keep the original sign. If they're opposite, one positive, one negative, or one negative, one positive, I just pretend they're all positive, do bigger minus smaller, and then I keep the sign of whichever had the larger absolute value.